Hey everybody, Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And behind me is the now famous High Line, a repurposing of elevated rail track to create a park in Manhattan, New York. Now, I was born in New York, raised in New York, spent time in Greenwich Village. I call this home. But with that said, I wish I could have gone to Photokina. Would have been nice. Instead, today we get to go to Photo Plus Expo right over there. And this is going to be a little bit different than what I usually do. Call it a first touch uh, uh, video of several cameras that first came to light at Photokina. We'll be looking at the latest Olympus. We'll be looking at the latest Panasonic. I'm really interested in the Fujis. And we'll take it from there. When Canon announced the EOS M5, I wrote that it's the first Canon I've been excited by in a long time. And the reason why is because this just may be Canon's first serious attempt at a mirrorless camera. Now, we already know from the specs that have already been shared that it doesn't have 4K, but you know what? I'm gonna give that a pass if the rest of it really works well. And the reason why I say that is because what Sony is weak on at the moment is ergonomics, both in terms of the actual physical uh, controls and the menu system. So first look, first touch with the EOS M5 here at the Canon uh, exhibition booth. And I can tell you that this looks like and feels like Canon has done a really good job on the ergos. For example, right here, I'm moving the aperture. Right here, I'm moving the shutter speed. That is really easy and really fast. Now, do I care that it's got a selfie like this? You know I don't. I think that's ridiculous, actually. But that's okay. What's also interesting is that they have my menu functionality. They've had it for a while. And what that allows is for you to set up your own custom menus with a really nice touch screen. That should make it easy to speed things up. Now, I only have this. You see it's attached to the wire. They're keeping these under pretty close guard. And that makes perfect sense. But all that this short intro has done has really piqued my curiosity. Congratulations, guys. This looks pretty darn interesting. Next stop on our first touch tour here at Photo Plus Expo 2016, Fuji and the X-T2. Look, if you're watching this, you've already heard about the X-T2, and I'm not going to talk to you about X-Trans, blah -de blah because in the end, it doesn't matter except how you actually interact with the camera and the images that you capture as a result. On first touch, that's what's interesting to me about the Fuji X-T2. I understand now why people are singing the praises of prime lenses designed to cover just this size sensor without going to full frame. Big difference. This is a 90 millimeter F2, and it is much smaller than my own Sony FE 90 millimeter 2.8 macro. I like of course I would. Look at my hair. I'm old school. I like the physical dials. It sits very nicely in the hand. And although I actually prefer a viewfinder at the end rather than in the center, I have to say that as I look through this viewfinder, it seems a lot bigger. And at my age, even with glasses, that makes me a lot happier. It's noticeable. So these are things that are very interesting to me. The build quality, really nice. But then again, build quality on Sony is really nice too. The other thing that may be interesting about Fuji, beyond a core competence to be determined, but my instinct says, beyond a core competence for design. I mean, I love the way the uh, dials fit to finger. Is the idea that you can bake in very sophisticated edits in the camera without having to go into uh, post-production and use something like S-Log and DaVinci Resolve. Those of you who are following the channel, you know that I'm edging closer to it, but it's tough. I'd rather not spend that much time in post, especially when I'm under deadline. Anyway, I only have this guy for 15 minutes. I'm going to return it, but I'm really, really interested in the Fuji X-T2, and I've got to figure out how to get my hands on it for an extended review.
Okay, before anybody else cuts in front of us, let's go. Next stop on our first touch tour, Olympus and the OMD EM1 Mark II. But this is not a Mark II in my hands, it's a Mark I. Actually, that's as close as they'll let you get to the Mark II, although there is another one under glass. So here's the interesting thing. Because it's a Mark II, the controls are about the same. And once again, it's the controls that are really interesting to me. Dials right under the fingers. It really falls to hand beautifully. What's also interesting is these two buttons. I don't know if you can see it. We're using manual focus this time so that we don't uh, pull around. Eh, forget it. Don't worry about it. But these are assignable as well. And all four of these buttons I can manipulate without doing a thing. <laughs> I wish I could do it to the guys, too. But that makes it very, very interesting. Again, it appears that whereas Sony is the hot hand and has the greatest competence in sensors, other camera manufacturers are looking to add value in a different way. That makes perfect sense to me. I'm looking forward to the OMD EM1 Mark II. with an extended review, because I'd really like to see how this works. Yeah. Let's go and check out some other stuff. Next stop on our First Touch tour, I'm at Panasonic with their G85. Now, once again, I'm not going to go through the specs with you. If you're watching this, you're already pretty well aware of them. The question is, what makes this interesting? Well, in this case, I've got their vertical grip attached, and it's a mock-up. It's not finished. So it's got the vertical controls. It's got room for one extra battery. I think towards the end of 2016, we're actually expecting a little bit more out of an additional grip than just that, at least two batteries. But the thing that's also interesting is that like the Olympus and like the Fuji, it seems to me that these camera manufacturers are focusing on usability, no pun intended. So again, these main two dials assignable come very easily to hand, I like that. Reaching over to set aperture priority, shutter priority, that's a little bit of a stretch, but it doesn't bother me because this is typically what you'll set first and then you're working with these guys. It's light. It also seems to have a nice sized viewfinder. Maybe it's my imagination, maybe it's the placebo effect, but it seems to be at least as big. It actually seems to be bigger to me than the uh, viewfinder in the A6300, which is what I'm filming on right now in 1080p and not 4K. But what this really makes me feel like is that I want to get my hands on the GH5, which only a few weeks after the end of Photokina is still under glass behind me. So we're going to have to wait a while before we can go deep. But Sean over there, just off camera, is going to help me get that. All right, let's move on. I'm back at Panasonic. And the reason why is because after we stopped filming, I turned to Sean and said, how is your remote for the G85? And he answered the way any good employee said, it's awesome, it's the best. And I said, show me. And you know what? It's the best I've seen in the hybrid space. So let's cut over to Sean's iPhone. Is it an iPhone? Android. It's an Android. It's an Android because when he was showing it to me on his phone, the screen was cracked. I think it's a millennial thing. My children, all of them, just like that. Anyway, here we go. So with uh, this camera, all you do is when you set the camera to manual focus um, with the slider, now uh, what you get is on the setup here with the two control dials, uh, the two uh, buttons here, that'll let you move through focus. So there we go, refreshed a bit. So what you get here is you do get the actual punch in uh, on the display. So we'll go up here onto the bag here. We can uh, use these two dials here to change your focus points as well as turn uh, focus peaking on. That's outstanding. That is really outstanding. 
And if the Wi-Fi in this building <laughs> is good enough, the interference wasn't bad. So as you can see there, we've got focus peaking now active up on the, uh, the finder. I can go back in, I can turn that off if I don't want to be seeing anymore. You can also turn autofocus back on and you can select autofocus, you can select ISO, take us through Correct. it. Correct, yeah. So with autofocus, you want to turn that back on, you flip the switch back on the camera. You'll get a little notification that camera operation is in the process. Um, usually only takes a split second. Um, you know, obviously on the trade show floor, things are a little tougher. Yeah, we'll definitely cut you some slack. But what we get, uh, once you're in the full um, automatic, what you get is some pretty nice features where you can click in, grab what style focusing you want, if you want your face and eye detect. Outstanding. If you want your tracking, single area, custom multi. Once you select that point out, you have the ability to also come in, change your ISO, your shutter speed, because uh, I'm in shutter priority. If I change the full manual. White balance, what are your options there? Uh, you get to do everything in white balance that you can do on the camera. So auto white balance, all your presets for... Um, connection was lost on the trade show floor. Yeah, it's okay. We'll cut you that slack. Uh, this way, move a little closer. Bottom line is, this is the most complete implementation of remote access I've seen yet, as I said earlier, on a hybrid camera. Yeah, pretty much. Um, there's not much that can really uh, compete with it. Okay. Well, Sean, thanks, man. We're going to continue on our tour, but this is really, really interesting. Oh, by the way, so can you dial in the specific Kelvin uh, with yes. white balance? So when you go in white balance, you go down, you have your Kelvin slider there. Um, when you come in with it, All right, well, I'm not gonna beat you up for that with uh, the Wi-Fi in here, that's great. Now, this final question. This level of remote operation is available on which Panasonic cameras? All of them. Point and shoots up into the top tier cameras. Really? Yes. Not often that I'm speechless. <laughs>So I'm back at Panasonic for a third time. The reason why is as Sean and I were walking back, I said, uh, do you have the FZ2500? Oh yeah, here it is. So what's interesting about this As I've written before, as you may have seen on YouTube before, I've said that at least on specs, this seems to be Panasonic's version of a Mark IV version of the RX10 Mark III. Why do I say that? Well, first, this, really, a built-in three-position neutral density filter that the RX10 Mark III doesn't have and that any of us who are really interested in doing video outside want. The next thing, Full touch screen. Pretty darn interesting as well. Next thing, full 4K, which results in a very minor crop. Instead of 24 to 480, in 4K it becomes 31 to 496, full frame equivalent. But the 4K really is 10 bit 422 out through that micro HDMI port. And I hate the micro HDMI port, but whoa, okay. Really, this is potentially tremendous. So, I gotta get my hands on this. You're gonna make that happen? All right. Claudia is doing her best not to fall over on the curb. She's walking backwards. She's being a great sport. As we leave our first and only day at Photo Plus Expo 2016. Look, to me, it's really simple. 
Sony owns the sensor market. It is their core competency. Other camera manufacturers have had to figure out where they fit in the firmament. It looks to me like micro four thirds cameras generally are placing their bets with physical control superiority and based on seeing what Panasonic has just done for the first time I'm seeing this in their remote, Panasonic owns the remote app space within the still video marketplace. Really surprising. Now, I love Sony. I'm with Sony. But the idea of having a remote app that lets me control white balance, shutter speed, focus. Claudia just did a great job. Keep going, you're doing great. And then with their new FZ2500, which is, wow, the next generation equivalent of the RX10 Mark III. This has been a fascinating few hours. We'll see what happens next. I'm excited. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. See you next time.